Thai protesters have clashed with security forces for a second day as the political crisis in Southeast Asia's second largest economy deepens further. Police fired tear gas at protesters who tried again to storm the Prime Minister's offices after they failed to take them and other high-profile government buildings in a self-styled People's Uprising on Sunday, or Victory Day, as they called it. Now, Suteb Tuaksoban, the protest leader, has delivered an ultimatum to Prime Minister Yingluck Shinawat to quit office in two days. His message and his core supporters are uncompromising. Mr. Suteb's protests are part of an existential battle against what he describes as the Thaksin regime, that is, Thaksin Shinawat, the fugitive former prime minister and the older brother of Ms. Yingluck. Mr. Thaksin and his allies have dominated politics since 2001, his support base of people in the poor rural north trumping the urban elite and southerners who tend to back the opposition. Here, a protest banner shows Mr. Suteb as a superhero, karate chopping Ms. Yingluck. Ms. Yingluck has refused to either step down or hold elections, but her tone on Monday was conciliatory reflecting government efforts to cool the situation down. But there's no sign yet of her appeals being answered. This is the scene outside Thai police headquarters in Bangkok, where protesters are rallying for the second successive day. They're not getting in past the layers of razor wire and riot police here. But that's not the point. As you'll hear from behind me, the point is to show that they're still here. And to keep the pressure up on Prime Minister Yingluck Sikawatra's administration and give the chance for other forces at play in Thailand's politics to do their work. Although Thailand switched from absolute monarchy to a British-style parliamentary system in the last century, the system has never achieved full legitimacy amid allegations of vote-buying and also intervention in politics by powers outside of parliament. These other forces shaping Thai politics mean there is huge uncertainty about what comes next, even if the protests turn out to lack the overwhelming popular force to topple the government. A number of things could happen. The demonstrations could um, sort of fizzle out. And it is the King's birthday coming up on Thursday. And it may be that the opposition decides to tactically withdraw, let's say, out of respect for the King. Um, another possibility, as I said, would be that the judiciary uh, would intervene. The other great wild card is the military, which toppled Mr. Thaksin's government in 2006. The government deployed soldiers at the weekend to protect key buildings. But many analysts think the military is reluctant to be seen as interfering again, as also maybe are the courts, which threw out another Thai government in 2008. I think the army is not very keen to act at all. The judiciary, we don't yet know and they probably could find grounds if they really looked hard enough to, to annul the current administration. But again, the protesters are, are, are faced with the same problem that they've been faced since 2001 when Taksin was first elected, which is that if there is an election and it's free and relatively fair, or relatively free and relatively fair, then what's going to happen is that Taksin or a Taksin affiliated party is going to be re-elected. And that is the logjam that's really at the heart of Thai politics. We'll know soon whether Mr. Suteb's ultimatum has worked. But even if Ms. Yingluck's government survives for now, the destabilizing and dangerous struggle for control of Thailand will go on.